See, I'd already replaced my income with real estate. So it wasn't the income I needed to, to, to work on. It was just the practicality of how can I evolve this business into something that will continue to generate me a salary and income as well as um, look after all the clients and grow. And This is Property Invest Story where we talk to successful property investors to find out more about their stories, mindset and strategies. I'm Taran Shum and in this episode on Property Invest Story, we continue the conversation with Difna Bolholt of I Love Real Estate. Using her business skills, self-motivation and proactive attitude, Bolholt began her portfolio without any money while juggling her own business and her family life and go on to train the investing leaders of the future. Also, before we delve into this episode, go over to propertyinveststory.com and subscribe to receive your free property investor case studies where you'll learn how to generate passive income from your properties. Go there now to sign up for free. Boholt's movement into property investing was spurred by challenges of spending time with her children while working full-time and she was encouraged by her own self-confidence and belief. Well, one, I think the biggest thing is belief system, belief in yourself um, and and getting out there, actually just turning up and getting out there, you know, talking to people. Real estate is something that everybody thinks is, um, you know, you can do behind a computer. You can't. It's very much a people business. And the more people you connect with, the more opportunities present themselves. And when you're, you know, we spoke before about your area system and things like that, you know, there's a lot more to that. There's there's energy levels, there's electromagnetic fields, there's, um, you know, the chemical reactions that go in your body when you have certain thoughts, processes, and those sort of things. The whole thing kind of comes together to, to be who you are. And I always had uh, a very core belief system that, you know, if that's what I decided to do, I could make it happen. I had no idea how I was going to replace my income in 18 months when I first started. It wasn't even really that I planned to do that. It was just that I knew I needed to make passive income um, because that's how I was going to have more time with my children. And time with my children was was my overarching why Um, because when you're working 40, 60 hours a week, you're a lousy mother. Um, And I knew that. And uh, I needed to do something in order to to recreate that kind of time with kids. So passive income was definitely the vehicle. The exact how, I didn't know. I knew it had to be passive, positively cash flowed properties. But beyond that, back then, I really didn't know. Despite these challenges, Bolholt was able to use positive gearing in the financial climate to start her portfolio with no money down. And it was really a matter of um, taking one step at a time. And having the belief system that something would show up, you know, one way or another, I'll make it happen. I don't know how, but I'll make it happen. And the first three deals, um, I mean, there's, a, there's a, a longer story to it, but basically I, um, I found a seller who was in need. And my seller was a guy who had committed into a, a shopping center site and uh, he was a builder and developer. He had uh, the banking industry had turned where it was quite tough to get loans, um, and the market had turned, so it was a bit hard to sell properties as well. Now I picked his cheapest properties, which was a, a two little townhouses side by side. And um, what I did was, uh, first of all, I, I got in front of the, the developer directly because I wanted to negotiate myself. Now that's not cutting the agent out; my agent was there. Um, I just wanted to create a deal that that. Uh, I could do because it wasn't just a price deal. Price was actually less important to me than the terms were. And to cut a long story short, what I negotiated with him to do was to basically lend me the 20% deposit on a personal loan agreement. Um, And I had the personal loan agreement all done up. I actually negotiated it to be an interest-free loan for five years. And I could pay him as and when I could out of my business. So he thought I was going to pay him in dribs and drabs this 20%. Obviously, I borrowed the other 80% and I paid him that money because I had serviceability. I didn't have any cash. Um, so that's how I, I got into the first property. I didn't pay him in dribs and drabs. What I did was I waited for till the fourth year. If the properties went up enough, 
um, I re uh, I will refinance those properties and pay him out the rest of the money. Boholt's strategy also protected her from financial pitfalls. If they hadn't gone up as much as I would have liked, it gives me a year to sell that property, put whatever they have gone up in my pocket. Meanwhile, I've got four years worth of passive income, and then I pay him out the other twenty percent. So. I didn't negotiate in price. I actually got the pro- I, I paid list price for the properties, which was over what he was expecting because um, everybody negotiates, but I got the terms that I wanted. And effectively, he vendor financed me the 20% deposit. Now, he had no intention of doing that. He had no intention of structuring a deal that way, but there wasn't a lot of buyers around. It wasn't a hot market. And if he wanted to sell the properties, this is a way I could make it happen. Any other way, I couldn't buy those properties. And, uh, you know, everybody won. You know, Bruce got, the, my agent got paid. Um, he got the price that he wanted eventually. Uh, and I got a property that I didn't have to put any, any money in to actually buy. And it was positively geared. So everybody wins in that scenario. But um, when I paid him his money out uh, towards the end of the five years, he, he, he was very happy. He thought, uh, he didn't think he was going to get his money, but he did. Although the obscurity of positive gearing as an investment strategy meant that she had to rely on her self-confidence, she did have some guidance. You know, more than education, I actually think it was guts. But back when I was doing this, this was not something that was common. I mean, even the word positive gearing, I don't think it was in the dictionary. I really don't. Um, And it was not something that anybody else was doing. Somebody that I had listened to that I thought um, made a lot of sense was someone by the name of Dr. Dolph DeRoos. Now, we actually became friends, um, and I've spoken on stage with him many times. I actually had him on one of my US tours uh, when he you know, lived in the States, and we've spent some time together since then. But he was somebody I respected with um, you know, his attitude around positive gearing and things like that. Boholt has since gone on to train her own mentors within her own company, as well as enlisting external help. I have my own people, I have my own people within um, and uh, that's where I bring my leaders up through that and I've got some, you know, one amazing guy who, you know, I call him the mini Anthony Robbins because he really is, he's fantastic from a motivational perspective and, and uh, you know, he'll, he'll be out doing things very shortly on his own or with me but, you know, um, in, on, our, on his topic, I've got some fantastic trainers who, who are really fantastic at varying strategies and, um, and, uh, you know, they will continue to, uh, to, to train and educate in those strategies themselves. So I really um, nurture from within. Um, I guess there's, um, you know, there's, there's one old friend that I've kind of roped in because he's been in the industry a million years and he adds a lot of experience to the, to the whole world and his name's Kevin Doodney. Um, and he really started a lot of the, um, you know, the smaller spaces and, uh, and uh, he's the, uh, the future housing task force um, leader, uh, and he. Uh, you know, a lot of people have copied what he does, um, but he's the originator, and, and he's, I guess, one of the only ones I kind of bring in externally who, who um, I just know adds a lot of benefit to the uh, to the community. Boholt's strategy during the early stages of her career allowed her to rapidly expand her portfolio through planning ahead and ensuring her financial security with each addition. So I think it's it's the earlier years when I first started out that I think are more important. And um, I think a big part of growing your portfolio is actually um, you, you need to be balancing income and growth. Now, I don't keep anything apart from that one mistake that was <laughs> negatively geared. I mean, if at the end of the at the end of the strategy, I might I might buy it as negatively geared, but I'll do things to it to turn it into positive. And there's lots of strategies you can do to do that. Um, if at the end of the deal it's not positively geared, but I've elevated the value, I'll sell the property. You know, take my take my chunk money and put it back into the next deal. But all the time you're balancing off income and growth. And I think it's something whenever you buy or sell a property, you need to step back. Don't get emotional about it and go, okay, and this is a really good question to ask and it's something you, your listeners should take, take on board, is what does my portfolio need next? It's not what you want, what you like or anything else. It's what does my portfolio need next? Because every deal that you do, the next deal needs to strengthen your weakness. So for instance, if you've got low equity, you don't have a lot of money, 
then your next deal needs to be a chunk deal. You need to do a deal where you're elevating the value of the property in some form um, so that at the end of the deal, whether you refinance or whether you sell that property, you're in a stronger position for having that property than before you before you bought it. Conversely, if you're low in serviceability, you've got a low job or you don't have a job, um, you need to buy properties that are strongly, positively geared because that next property needs to strengthen your position. And you always should be thinking two deals ahead. So so you never get into a deal that if at the end of the deal, you haven't got enough money to get into the next one. So you've either got to be, by getting into the deal, elevating the value so that that gives you the momentum to get into the next one, or that um, it's a sell and then you take that money and go into the next one. So the end of the deal, you should always have be in a position to get into the next deal. Otherwise, you've chosen the wrong strategy. It doesn't work. Because you, you need that momentum to be able to keep investing. And that's what replaces your income. It's the ongoing, consistent um, you know, investing with the underlying rule that you don't keep anything that's not positive. Um, and every deal needs to strengthen your weakness. And at the end of every deal, you need to be in a position to go into the next one. The success of her investing strategy allowed Bolholt to continue balancing running her business while spending time with her family and her property investing. See, I'd already replaced my income with real estate. So it wasn't the income I needed to, to, to work on. It was just the practicality of how can I evolve this business into something that will continue to generate me a salary and income as well as um, look after all the clients and grow and... But I kept the accountancy practice going, um, and uh, and I because I, I decided I couldn't be a full time mum either, um, and I continued to invest. But it gave me the luxury then of of basically being able to choose, you know, what I wanted to do. And I I can't remember the number of years, but I kept that business going then for a number of an, a number of years thereafter. But what I did do is I put into place a retirement plan. So I didn't want to close the practice. I mean, you know, I liked my clients. I liked talking to my clients. I, you know, I respected that, you know, they didn't want me to just shut up shop either. So I brought other people into my business with a view to um, replacing myself in the business. And that took about two and a half to three years where I was in a position that I could actually step out of the business. I still owned half of it. Uh, I could step out of the business, still get paid, from the business as well as my property income, um, but not have to work in it. But that was two, two to three years in the planning to be able to do that. It's not something you can do overnight. Coming up after the break, we'll chat to Boholt about the habits that helped her to succeed. But if you are consistently doing things and your consistent application and determination, that's what will, that's what will make the difference. That's what gets results. The resources she uses and produces really changed the, um, you know, the mindset of a whole generation. It's a fantastic, uh, a fantastic book to get your children to read. And that's next. I'm Tyrone Shum, and you're listening to Property Investory. Hey, podcast listeners, are you enjoying listening to these stories and want more? Then head over to propertyinvestory.com and subscribe to receive your free property case studies that I only send exclusively via email. Just one of the many benefits of being part of this community. These real case studies are from experienced property investors where they share specific numbers of their portfolio, their strategies and much more. Simply visit propertyinvestory.com to get your free case studies. Now back to the show. Meditation and self-reflection allows Bowholt to focus and plan her goals consistently. Look, I think that 15 minutes a day, it's all it takes, 15 minutes a day just focusing on you. Now, whether you do that, you know, eyes shut to music or whether you sit down with just a piece of paper and really write things out and, and, and you know, spend a little bit of time daydreaming about, about you and what you want in life and the way you want your life to pan out and things like that, I think is very important. And 15 minutes is all it takes, but it needs to be every single day. And it will change your life forever. It honestly will. Um, something else that I think that is very important is consistency um, and being regimented in that consistency. I mean, you know, if you go to the gym, going to the gym once is not going to change your body. Um, but if you are consistently doing things and your consistent application and determination, that's what will that's what will make the difference. That's what gets results. 
Uh, and it's it's just the application of that over a long period of time, which is why little techniques like a reward system, even on a daily basis, um, you know, of something that you know, I'll, I'll get this done and then I'm going to go and do that. I'll get this done and then I'm going to go and do that. Just those little mind games that you play with yourself throughout the entire day make such a big difference. Um, you know, it, it's really about having um, respect for yourself that you don't let yourself down by um, saying you're going to do something and then don't do it, you know, because little by little what that does is it chips away at who you really are and you will only achieve who you see yourself being. Uh, you will only put into practice what you see yourself doing and it's, it's really um, keeping that self-image protected, keeping that self-image very, um, uh, very secure because that is your life, that is your destiny because you will become that person. So, what books would Boholt recommend for fellow or future investors? Obviously, Kiyosaki with his Rich Dad Poor Dad book. But, I mean, whilst it was a great mindset book and it's really changed the, um, you know, the mindset of a whole generation, it's a fantastic, uh, a fantastic book to get your children to read and things like that. It gets their head in the right spot, which I think is, you know, eighty percent of the battle. Um, it doesn't have a lot of a how to. There's not. There's not. Um, uh, the, a step-by-step process, which for me probably became the easy part because of all my business training, because of all my, um, you know, my logistics training and analytics and all of those sort of things. The how-to I could work out, the the motivation I needed and the belief system I needed, uh, but the how-to that's where I had my strength. Where, you know, the, the likes of Robert Kiyosaki is. A lot of his strategies don't work in Australia for starters, and um, he he's not a technical guy. He doesn't doesn't get into the nitty gritty of exactly how it has to be done, and in particular how it has to be done in Australia. But that was my strength. I already had that. Um, once I once I worked out the formula, I already had the logistics. I had the strategies. I had the um, you know the how to because that was my training, and whether it's the business training you know, all of everything that I'd ever done in the past kind of really set me up to go, that's what we got to do. After she worked out the formula, Boholt went on to share in her own books that provide help for investors in many key areas of investing. Oh, look, I've written a stack of books. I mean, my story is Confessions of a Real Estate Millionaire. But then I've gone on to, to write specific um, books on certain things. So I've got Asset Protection Secrets of a Real Estate Millionaire. I've got Tax Secrets of a Real Estate Millionaire. I've got 101 10 Top Tips in Real Estate. Uh, I've got the Peg in the Sand Journal, which is basically a um, how to step out two years of investing in the, through um, you know, goal setting and things like that. Um, I've uh, I've got the Finance Secrets of a Real Estate Millionaire due to come out very very shortly. I've got um, the Real Estate Millionaire Within, which is all about mindset um, and and getting yourself market ready from an internal perspective, not just a financial perspective. That'll be out very shortly. Um, I'm writing a couple of other books. I'm writing a kid's book at the moment. I've got lots of things on. (laughs) So if she were to meet her past self from 10 years ago, what would she tell her? 10 years ago, I would say you're in for a wild ride there, girl. (laughs) Um, you know, everything everything you do creates who you are, good and bad. Um, good and bad experiences create who you are and uh, I really feel it's not something that you go back and say, oh, I wish I'd done this, oh, I wish I'd done that uh, because, you know, even the mistakes are benefits to you if you learn from them. To help other investors navigate their own property investing journey, Boholt has many resources available across several platforms. Look, I do a lot of free stuff. Um, I think the first thing is to um, go to my website, which is uh, www.iloverealestate.tv. There is a bucket load of free stuff on there. I've got articles, I've got blogs, I've got podcasts, I've got all sorts of things on there that people can you know, consume in their, at their leisure. But something I do on a regular basis is... Um, I do a podcast myself on uh, iTunes and um, it's free and you know if they'd like to get onto iTunes and subscribe to that I'm normally in the top 10 um, for podcasts in the finance section and again it's just I love real estate is what you've got to look out for 
uh, subscribe to that so that they come to you automatically. Um, and if they'd like to leave a bit of a post and, uh, and email me through, there's some details there about emailing me through um, their ranking of, of my posts, then I send, uh, I select somebody and I send them out a, a gift, which is one of my books normally. Um, so that I've got that going on. And then, of course, there's the I Love Real Estate um, Facebook page, which a lot of things go on there as well. And I have a, a range of um, free events around the country on a regular basis. Um, I don't have any coming up at the moment, but I will have next year. So uh, get on the website and keep an eye out for all of the, the free stuff that I do. Thank you to Dimpna Bolholt, our guest on this episode of Property Investory. If you want to hear more about her journey, then visit our website at propertyinvestory.com. Simply type in the search bar Dintner Bolholt and select that episode to learn more about her story. Also, if you haven't subscribed to receive your free property case studies that I only send out exclusively via email, you can text me your email address to 0499881040 to subscribe. These real case studies are from experienced property investors where they share specific numbers of their portfolio, the strategies and much more. Simply text me your email address to 0499881040 to get your free case studies. Thanks for listening.